Hi guys, today we're solving quadratics using square roots. The skills you'll learn today, you're going to use when you see an equation that has an x squared, that's a quadratic, or a quantity squared, that would be a quadratic. You would just see with your eyeballs. See those quadratics. When you see these, you can use square roots to solve for x. This is a square root symbol. Let's just practice some basic square roots. The square root of 16 means what two numbers multiply to itself to get 16. Hopefully in your head you thought 4, but there's also another answer. What else times itself gives you a positive 16? Yes, negative 4. So your answer is positive and negative 4, and we can say it like that. So this means a positive 4 and a negative 4. So it kind of like shortens it. It's like shortcut. What's the square root of 25? Positive woo, and negative 5. If you multiply those by itself, you get 25. The square root of 81 is plus or minus 9 or positive or negative nine. The square root of 326. Now that even I can't do in my head, I'd have to use a calculator. So on a calculator, um, on your phones, it would look like this symbol that you're looking for on most of your phones. You might just see that. You might see a little two there, meaning you're taking the square root. Um, the Desmos does have a good scientific calculator. Those are good to calculate this. The square root of 326 would be a positive and a negative 18.06. That means 326 is not a perfect square. Where 81, 25, and 16, those are considered perfect squares because their square root numbers are whole numbers or integers. And 18.06 has a decimal involved. So this is not a perfect square, but we can still square root it using a calculator. You're gonna solve some equations now. The steps to solve. First, isolate the squared term. Second, square root both sides to keep everything balanced. And then you'll get two answers. Solve for x. The squared term is already isolated. So my step is to square root both sides. But before we do that, let's discuss what this equation is really saying. It's really saying what number, so some number, I'm gonna call it a box, some number times itself, because that's what it means to square, is a positive 36. So what number times itself gives you a positive 36? Your answer should be, 6 and negative 6. So, um, let's see, because 6 times itself gives you 36, and negative 6 times itself gives you 36. Now, if I wanted to solve this slow algebraically, let's say I couldn't think of this. What I would do is, I have my squared term isolated, I'm going to square root both sides. And when I square root both sides, the square root and the squares are opposites in the same sense that adding and subtracting are opposites, dividing and multiplying are opposites. That just cancels out. So I know it looks a little complicated, but your answer just becomes x. And the square root of 36 is plus or minus six, which means x equals a six, and x equals negative six. Two answers. Number two, 80 equals x squared minus 20. Your squared term is not isolated. Here it is. It's not all by itself. So I'm going to add 20, that's the opposite of subtracting 20, to both sides. 
80 plus 20 is 100. So I get 100 equals x squared, and these cancel out. The opposite of squaring is square root. So I'm going to square root both sides to undo the squared. The square root and the squared cancels each other out. So I get x equals, and the square root of 100 is plus or minus 10. So your two answers would be 10 and x equals negative 10. Two solutions. Number three, 50 equals x plus two squared plus one. My squared term is not isolated. I'm gonna subtract one to both sides. And I get 49 equals the quantity x plus two squared. As I'm working my way in to solve for x, I need to get to that x, but I have to get rid of the squared first. What's the opposite of squaring? Square root. So I'm going to keep everything balanced by square rooting both sides. The square root of 49 is plus or minus 7. The square root of anything squared is just itself. So this just cancels this out. So you're left with x plus 2. So we have one more step, and that is to solve for x, subtract 2 to both sides. So we get two answers, x equals. Now this looks weird, but remember this just means a plus 7 and a negative 7. So really you have two answers, 7 take away 2 and a negative 7. Oops, not a fraction. Negative 7 take away 2. Oops. So we get 5 and negative 7 take away 2 is negative 9. Two answers for x. Next page. Number four. Copy that equation. Solve 64 equals 6 times x minus 5 squared plus 10. Your squared term is not isolated. So, first step, subtract 10 to both sides. And I get 54 equals six times x minus five squared. My squared term is not isolated. I have to move the six. Six is not getting squared. To undo this multiplying, I'm going to divide. So if you wanted to write notes, we had to subtract 10, and then we had to divide by six to both sides. That cancels this out. And I get 9 equals um, x minus 5, that quantity, squared. What's the opposite of squaring? And this is where you will square root both sides. Square root of 9 and the square root of a quantity squared. The square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. The square root of x minus 5 squared the squared and the square root cancels each other out, so you're left with just that inside, x minus 5. Add 5 to both sides to isolate x. Remember, we're just solving for x. You're going to get two answers here. So you get x equals a positive 3, add 5, which is 8. And x equals negative 3, add 5, which is a positive 2. Two answers. That means I could put these, either of these numbers back into this original equation. So if I put 8 in and evaluate it out, I should get 64. If I put a 2 in for x, subtract 5, square it, multiply by 6, add 10, I should get 64. No other numbers will work for x in this equation. Just 8 would work to make the right-hand side equal 64, and just the two would work to make the right-hand side equal to 64. Next, remember last time in our notes, we um, talked about a pumpkin getting catapulted. Here is your equation from the last notes. f of x equals negative 
Nine, negative 19 thousandths times x minus 40 squared plus 30. Suppose a farmer was catapulting the pumpkins to the bed of a truck five feet off the ground. Where to place the truck to land the pumpkins? Okay, so here we have a little sketch of a pumpkin. I don't have my colors nearby today. So remember the pumpkin went up and then it's gonna land. This is if it were landing on the ground. But now the farmer changed its mind. It wants it to land in a truck five feet off the ground. So suppose this is five feet. If I go across, it's like I want the truck to be right here. The bed of the truck. A truck. Got some wheels. Choo choo. This is where I want my pumpkins to land. In the bed of the truck five feet off the ground. We need to determine this value for x. We don't know what that value for x is. Now notice though on the graph, the pumpkin will go up, 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 up and land. It will hit five feet at two spots, but you want this side. You want the larger, larger value for x. We want the one, not when the pumpkin's going up in the air, we want the one when the pumpkin's coming back down to land into the truck. So the five, notice how the five is five feet off the ground and that is on your y-axis. So in this equation, this was your original equation, I'm just copying it. In your equation, you are going to put 5 in for f of x, in for the height. 5 equals negative 0 0.019 times x minus 40 squared plus 30. Now it looks complicated, but it's super similar to that last problem we did above. You want to isolate your squared term. So I'm going to subtract 30 to both sides. And I get negative 25 equals negative 0 0.019 times x minus 40 squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.019, negative. Use a calculator. I got 1,315.79 when I divided those two equals x minus 40 squared. Now I'm going to square root both sides. I definitely would need a calculator for this. I don't need a calculator on the right hand side because I'm square rooting a squared. That just cancels. So it's almost like everything on the right hand side cancels. The plus and minus 30s canceled. The multiplying by that decimal, dividing by the decimal canceled. The squared and the square root cancels x minus 40 equals plus or minus 36.274. Remember in your calculator you're looking for a square root button. So we have one more step, add 40 to both sides and remember this is going to make sense because there's two x values when the pumpkin's at a height of five on its way up and then on its way down. So we get two answers. A positive 36.274 plus 40 and a negative 36.274 plus 40. So we get 76.274 feet or 36. 3.7 feet.